Hi guys, in this video we are going to be looking at creating the Rook chess piece. Now, as I've mentioned before, it's far easier if you can to start with something that you've already made and adjust it. So, in a similar way to I've done before, I am going to use my pawn model, so I'm just going to nip back into there, okay, and I'm going to use this to make an adjustment, okay. Now what I'm going to do, um, just to use this as reference, I'm just going to move it over to the side actually and copy and paste and then I've got two okay so that by double clicking I shall just name pawn and by pressing the up arrow a couple of times it allows me to get to the lathe nerves which I shall now label rook okay and that just allows me to use that as height reference a little bit later on so using this spline and what I have before, I'm just going to go to my side view and then I'm going to edit my spline here. So using the points tool, using the selection, I'm just going to select the points that I no longer want, okay, and press delete. Now, it's nice to get rid of them, so I'm just going to have a look at those and I'm going to sort of look at the height of my pawn model and how much I want the rook to be taller, so about there-ish, okay. I'm just going to create, select that inner one and I'm just going to move it out, okay. So we get a much steeper curvature. Don't just adjust that. Obviously this is all largely down to how you want your chess pieces to be or how your chess pieces are going to look depending on the references that you've got. I'm just going to turn the lathe nerves off so I'm just left with the spline. What I'd really like to do at this point is add some more geometry, some more spline to the end so that I can just carry on up. But if I command or control click, you can see that I can add the geometry, but it adds it from that end. Now, splines have a really good function, which means I can reverse the order that those sort of, it's beginning and end points. So if I go up to mesh and then spline, I can reverse sequence. And then you can see that the spline changes colour. It is white at the beginning and blue nearish the end. So if I just now command control click, I can add my extra point where I need it to be from the end that I want. So I'm just going to drag and drop those, sorry, drag and move those out a little bit more to give myself the base of the rook, base of the tower as it were, and just move those out up there. And I'm going to do one more move tool, one more command click. And that gives me the top height that I need. So now if I turn that back on, let's turn the lathe back on and have a look in Cinema 4D. Okay, we've got a very <laughs> robust and chunky rook. So I'm just going to pull out one of those points a little bit so it's a little less thin in the middle. Okay. Now, the easiest way to add the kind of ramparts, as it were, or parapets, depending on what you want to call them, as to this chess piece, is to extrude them out. Okay, but to extrude them out, I need to change the nature of this piece. Okay, so I need to make it editable. At the moment, this object is made up of its lathe nerves and the spline, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it editable. So if I just go over to the left hand side where the make editable button is, you can see that it pops up and lets me know that it converts a parametric object to a polygonal object. And I can press shortcut C to do it. So if I press this button, you can see the change. Obviously the big difference is how it looks on the screen. Um, it's now made up of all of its points, um, polygons and edges. And over here in the right hand side, we no longer have access to the spline that originally made it or the lathe nerves that it was created from. So if I just now go to my polygon tool, if I want to edit polygons, I'll need to be on the polygon tool and my selection. And if I just select my way round, you can see that I now have the top, all of those polygons on there. I'm going to use a tool that they call Inner Extrude. Okay. In order to do that, I'm going to use some keyboard shortcuts. Now if I press M, you just press, you don't need to press and hold, just press M and then that will give you a list of keyboard shortcuts. And the one that I want, okay, is down the bottom, okay, called Inner Extrude, sorry, Extrude Inner. And if I press W now, 
there we go, my little icon changes and my attributes manager changes and that shows you that I'm now on the extrude inner tool. Now if I make sure that I'm not selecting the arrows in any way, shape or form, um, and sort of in a nice gap over here, if I click left, click and hold the mouse and move left, you can see that it extrudes that way. Or if I click and hold out, then it extrudes the other, okay. One of the things I did notice just then is that as I click in, you can see that we get that central point so that we get a few more in there, okay. Now, what this creates is a nice ring around the outside that would allow me to extrude um, the little sort of parapets up. Now, I'm going to need to select most of them um, and deselect some. So the easiest way of doing that is use a ring select. So again, using the keyboard shortcuts, if I press U, that brings up the selection uh, shortcuts and the ring select is B. Okay, so now if I hover over one of these edges, you can see that it will select a ring. Obviously that would select all the way around the outside, but that is the ring that I want it to select. Okay, so now I have those polygons. Going back up to the move tool, I am just going to command or control click and I'm going to get rid of every fourth one and that shows you that I then have nice six sort of areas selected. Now I need to extrude them up and to do that I need to get the extrude tool. So again keyboard shortcut if I go to M and then I've got T for extrude, press T, my icon changes again and then if I click and hold the left mouse button you can see that if I drag right, it goes up. If I drag left, it goes down. Obviously, up is the direction I need it to go in. Okay, and there we go. And that, as you can see, gives me a really nice sort of rook piece. If you want to change that or edit that, I can now just use the green handle and I can move those polygons up. You can say that actually moves the polygons I have selected. If, for example, I wanted more geometry and I wanted to extrude again, I could click left drag left to right and you can see that that gives me an extra layer an extra ring as it were of polygons okay well that's the rook created now so i will see you again in the next video